Welcome to the official catch up. Uh, today is going to be a quick episode. Uh, it's myself, Chris, and I'm joined by Ben. How are you doing, Ben? Not too bad, Chris. Nice early morning start for us this morning. Not like it, but nice to be up and early and, and having a bit of chat. Oh, I need to be up early for the day, obviously, for the Spurs game later. So. Of course, of course. <laughs> no, I'm no way uh, looking forward to, to <laughs> that, but um, we did have the return of football, obviously, yesterday. Uh, friendly games, first time in six months for some of the guys obviously playing games it was obviously great to see a lot of friendly results uh, some some obviously we'll, we'll get into a wee bit later but obviously we we didn't see them all uh, in terms of results but you know it was, it was good to see football back basically yeah I think that was important I think the fact that it have been a long time coming what's it been about six months now since we actually had any sort of um, football match so yeah, nice, nice to get, um, nice to get games played and um, get back to a, a kind of, I guess, normality. Some some aspects. It was obviously completely different for football yesterday, but it was nice to just to have a match to something to talk about and a bit something positive for people to kind of to look at. I think the players themselves have been missing it quite badly, and the training's just not the same as, as football is it? A uh, football match, so I think they've been quite glad to get back out in the field and, and just get their legs going. Kind of planning for a new season, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and I obviously mentioned uh, we posted out some results. Uh, I had to add a few, few later. Uh, <laughs> some some clubs were sending me uh, after the fact, but um, if anyone's interested in the friendly results, there's a post on Facebook that I put out. I'm constantly updating if I see other fixtures. So Facebook, actually, other than Twitter for once, is probably the place to go for uh, for all the updates. But no, um, yeah, I was. You know, Saturday morning, obviously, you saw the buzz of the boys, the players, the management. It was great. And uh, there was a few few results that caught my eye. Obviously, I put out, I, I got a wee bit of stick for uh, posting, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, match of the day or whatever for uh, friendlies. But uh, that's part of the buzz, eh? That's, um, I'm stuck in, my, in the house like everyone else, uh, fan-wise, on a match day. So, adds to the buzz. I think that the hype will die down a wee bit now that, you know, it's it, they've got the first one out of the way. Um, it's obviously on Fon's point of view that they, they can't come to games yet, but uh, look, it's our job to keep everyone updated um, and in respect to some clubs that you know that are, don't want to advertise friendlies and that, that that's fair enough. But uh, how did Kilwinning get on yesterday, mate? Uh, so we played Irvin Vicks, uh, closed doors obviously on our Astro and won thirteen uh, 0 uh, against Irvin Vicks. So I think Irvin Vicks will probably walk one of the the bottom tiers uh, or the bottom leagues of the West region last year. Uh, they didn't have much of a squad, to be fair to them. Um, I think they played uh, our back, uh, one of our um, under-21s keepers played for them and their manager, who I think was probably in his late 40s, early 50s, was playing centre mid. Um, so I think they didn't have much of a squad. I think they had about one sub or something like that. I don't even know if they did have a sub, actually, to be honest. But... 13-0, great for our boys to get out and um, get played as a team. Uh, our new striker, David Ramsey, started and scored five within about 25 minutes, half an hour or something like that. So nice to see him get some goals, uh, change the team a bit at half-time, brought on like, Lisa Carlo and um, Lee, etc. in our new signing as well. So got them guys on and Carlo got a hat-trick. We brought in a, one of the couple of youth guys as well into the, the squad in the 21s, uh, from the 20s rather. Uh, Cairo Crawford, he's, he scored two um, in his first game for, for the Buffs, so good to see, uh, again it was good to have a football back and be back amongst the boys and have a um, I didn't really get to see much of the game, I think we had to kind of have um, stewards and things around the the, the facility because we run a, it's like a community facility where there's, there's a lot of matches being played um, under 15s I think we're playing yesterday and there's uh, quite a few vantage points as well to watch the game from afar so we had to have stewards at certain points on the ground just to make sure that, that no one was standing trying to watch the game who shouldn't be so I didn't see a lot, an awful lot of the game to be honest so um, normally I'm doing my, my media thing but I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about that in a, in, a, in a moment or two but by and large it worked quite well I think in terms of what we're supposed to do in terms of rules with a few fans turn up trying to watch the match it's standard issue I think most Clubs probably had that problem yesterday, so um, we tried to move them on. A few people weren't so happy about it and got quite aggressive at times. Uh, other people accepted it and acknowledged that what we're doing is, is, is for the greater good of Scottish football rather than try to ban our own fans from seeing the game. So, yeah, it was a good day, a good day all round. In terms of the other results that I saw, obviously, I'm, I'm not going to go through them all, but uh, certainly 
Auckland like Talbot beat Anne Bank 5 0. Uh, Drum Chapel were away to Benburb, they won 1 0. I think one of the results for me was obviously Harriet Watt going down to Berwick and winning 2 1. Uh, Camelin yeah. drew 2 2 with East Allenshire. Clyde drew 0 0 with Cumbernauld Colts at Broadwood. Starville beat uh, Irvine Meadow 2 1. Yeah, yeah, interesting, interesting score that. I think um, obviously. Have- the expectation was Darvo were going to be absolutely flying. Um, I think there's a few players missing from their, their signings this, this summer, but uh, a close game by all accounts, and I think both teams were, were pretty strong in terms of um, their starting 11. So good to see John Darvo put on their, their first show in, on the park and having a, a close game. I think that'll bode well for the rest of the season. I think it'll be interesting to see how all these teams at that level will match up. So yeah, interested to, to see more about, about that. And, uh, I've actually been building a, um, a new squad certainly because they brought in new management at the kind of around about January, February time so uh, they've been building away and looks like they're doing, doing some good stuff uh, behind the scenes at Avonvix So there was a couple of results for the amateur sides I know Tull Cross Thistle uh, were away at Edinburgh Uni they won 2-0 which is a class result and uh, Johnson Bra obviously got beat by uh, Harmony Row, which was their under twenty one side. I thought that was a, a class result for the for the youngsters at uh, Harmony Row there. Yeah, I think Harmony Row are a, a really well established uh, youth football setup, and I think they normally are quite strong in terms of they bring in players um, players through from kind of young age right through to kind of that twenty one level. I'm not sure that Johnston Barra had a, a strong squad just today. I think from what I heard, they were struggling with. Um, getting some some players to play, so uh, I think there's a few teams in that in that boat yesterday. I think it was quite difficult. I know from speaking to Irvin Vicks yesterday, they they had I think two injuries and um, one guy who was having to self isolate, so they didn't have a keeper, for example, and we're kind of talking about playing their, their goalie coach or something like that. And goals and they ended up playing our I think our 21s keeper played for them, as I say. So uh, they were struggling. I think a few other teams will be the same boat because they're still. Still trying to get obviously get players in. I think some teams maybe are caught behind the eight ball a wee bit with the fact that they were kind of not signing guys in kind of June, July, so they've kind of maybe lost some players to, to other teams. So yeah, I think uh, don't read too much into the, the Johnston Borough um, result. I think they were they still a good side, and I think they finished top of the league last year, or so they won the league. I think last year from the the points per game um, aspect that they were in. I think they were in the bottom division of the West, and they they actually won that based on the. Uh, the PPG so uh, no mugs Johnson Borough so uh, we'll see what happens with them going forward Yeah, uh, Cumnock won 7-0 uh, against Lugar Boswell Thistle uh, an interesting one for me actually I don't I, I'm not too sure of Blantyre Victoria's uh, strength but they did get a 3-0 win over East Cole, uh, East Cole Bride Thistle which uh, was a pretty decent result on paper actually in terms of a, a friendly match uh, Galaferidine Rovers drew 1-1 with Lovian Thistle Hutchie Vale uh, Glen Afton uh, won two one over Muirkirk. Uh, Harrowford United won three 0 at Mabel. Uh, um, Kelly Hearts obviously who were streaming their game similar to Talbot won six one over Tynecastle. Uh, Kilburnie Ladeside won one 0 over Port Glasgow. And Shelston beat Vale of Clyde two one. See St Andrews two. Uh, Dundonald four for there. Uh, vale of Leven got their got a win over Linton Hotspurs. And uh, quite a lot of sort of fixtures war posted uh, probably move yeah. on to move on to our next point obviously there was a wee bit of uncertainty about how clubs should be dealing with the media side Ben uh, there was obviously Blantyre put out there you know that they couldn't sort of post during the game which uh, which obviously Kenny uh, the West of Scotland said you know that's not that's not exactly the rules but there's certainly there's a, I think it needs more clarity on the, on the issue with media, I think. Yeah, I think even you roll it back to the actual guidance that was put out by the, the SFA to begin with, with the, this kind of red, amber, green zones. I think the red zone is, is effectively the field at play. The amber zone um, was listed as something like the, the coaches, uh, officials and substitutes, which... I think people interpreted that as the officials meant you could be like the committee members or you could be the media guy and be in the amber zone. But from my interpretation, I took it that that was only the people involved directly in the match. Uh, so your coaches, your physio, uh, your subs, and not anyone from the committee. If you've got a fourth official, for a, for example, I think as well, you, you could have that in the um, on the side on the sidelines. But uh, then you've got your green zone, which is I mean, be four meters away from the from the Amber Zone, which is quite a distance in terms of um, being able to film games. So, yeah, I think it was definitely some interpretation of the rules in terms of um, 
what we said. I think uh, the, the guidance that came out, I think, was not to not to promote the friendly matches at all. Uh, I think that's down to the fact that you, if you post, say, we're playing Irvine Vicks at one o'clock on Saturday um, at Corrin Sports Club, then you might have a 20, 30, 40 folk turn up to try and watch the match, um, which obviously we don't want anyone turning up to watch the match at all. Uh, that would just make life more difficult for, for anyone who's involved in the committees at, at clubs and trying to make sure that we're following the protocols. Because let's face it, the reason we're following these protocols is, is so that we can get back to having fans in the, in the ground uh, and make sure we can start a season properly in, in, in mid-October. So... Uh, yeah, I think the, the rules uh, were definitely, I say, I say rules of guidance was probably open to interpretation for a lot of clubs. I think some clubs took it that, uh, let's say the officials was, was anyone um, within the kind of club. Uh, other clubs took it that you weren't allowed to do anything in terms of posting. I think um, if you're not to advertise friendlies, people starting to advertise by posting match updates on Twitter. It's, it's technically advertising the match if you're, if you're on Twitter and um, posting that onto Facebook or Twitter or whatever, then that leaves, you know, you're advertising the game. So I guess it depends. I think the, the age old problem here is the, is the interpretation. There's a lot of clubs that um, were interpreted different ways. I think me personally, at our club, we took it that, that no media person could actually uh, be involved in the game yesterday. And I was fine with that. I mean, I'm all for making sure that we, we follow the rules to the, uh, the letter so, so we can get the fans back in ultimately um, in uh, October so yeah it's a, it's a strange one I think it would be good to see something from either the SFA or uh, the leagues themselves to actually come out and tell us how, how we can operate from a media point of view because there's that flip side I think of that the fans kind of deserve to to know what's going on within your, your club and uh, I think if you were to post updates and if you were to um, do live streams etc then your fans are less inclined to actually turn up at the match, um, so I think that's that needs that needs some work from the, from the leagues and the uh, the SFA over the next few days. So hopefully we can get back next next weekend and everyone knows clear. And I noticed uh, there, there was a post obviously on Twitter, you know, that kind of was criticising the clubs and and the players for for you know promoting that they were buzzing and and whatnot. I mean, I'm a, I, I disagree with that. I mean, I understand the sentiment of not not wanting fans to turn up, but I think. You know, you have to have an element in trusting fans, and uh, I didn't see a post. I might be wrong, but I didn't see a post that posted out a friendly that didn't have the warning. Look, fans can't attend. I mean, yeah. you have to be sensible. I mean, my my point of view is that fans will know anyway. To be honest, when you know they'll probably still go de- down to a ground on a Saturday if they are going to do that uh, to see if there is a game, if it's posted or not. Um, obviously, they're not going to be allowed in, but. Um, yeah, the clubs are the clubs are doing it doing it differently, uh, and I respect that. Certainly, I didn't post out any any uh, results that clubs didn't post themselves. Like I know, I know there was a few other friendlies, uh, but I'm not I'm not going to be chasing clubs if they're not wanting to post them. You know, I'm not. You know, I, I wasn't yeah. uh, posting. I wasn't chatting to civil service strollers like, oh, what was your score against Arbroath? Where it was? Blah blah blah. Because um, that's really up to the clubs how they how they do it. Uh, I noticed Camelon obviously got a wee bit of fire from on, on Twitter, and basically what they were saying: look, um, we're not saying how we're doing it's right or wrong. Uh, it's our interpretation, like what we've mentioned, obviously. Uh, and yeah, no one likes the situation. We all want the same thing to have fans where where we're back where we belong. But in terms of the media, yeah, I think we do need clarification. Hopefully, we're going to have a wee bit. Uh, more in terms of uh, where as uh, Lowland League is, and hopefully Derek speaking to George. But from what my understanding was that you know it's, I think it's minimum the bare minimum to put on the match. If there is someone like yourself, Ben, uh, perhaps that needs to be there, that usually does media, and you've got you know a few minutes or whatever that you can post updates, then I don't really see any issue with that as long as you're obviously you're you're there to be to do to be doing another job like you were uh, yesterday. Yeah, I mean, I think if you can do it in a safe manner, um, then I don't see why not. If you can perhaps get your, uh, like a camera gantry, for example, that's kind of four metres tall, then there's nothing, nothing to stop you from being up there and, and filming the game. I think some grounds will be able to do it easier than others. I think if you look at maybe, like, take a good example of Urban Meadow, uh, they, are, they have the stand behind the dugout, so uh, there's a solid chance that they could really um, 
they could be kind of further back, uh, far enough away that their camera guys and stuff could actually film the game quite safely. And uh, I think that's what's important. I think it's making sure everything's safe uh, and making sure we're following the rules. Because let's face it, the, the, the following of the rules is only it's only in place so that we can do everything right and then we can, I say, ideally get things back to normal at a later date. I know we had what, test events yesterday at Aberdeen and Ross County and the SPFL and seemed to go well. I think looking at it, it wasn't. It was weird watching kind of Kelly versus Aberdeen and people are just sitting spaced out in specific spots within the the, the stands at uh, Aberdeen. So yeah, I think if we can get it right just now and these friendlies, the, let's face it, the friendlies aren't that important. Um, I think they're important to our players to get the to get the legs and and get kind of working on shape and getting their. Uh, the tactics right for the start of the season I think I think no club if we have to start the season with behind closed doors won't, won't factor in fans at all I think I think that's an important point uh, certainly myself I'm, I'm thinking about that all the time and how we can we can make things happen for for fans if it does come to a point uh, where the fans can't get back because let's not forget I think if you don't have fans back by uh, the start of the season um, the clubs will struggle hard to actually uh, survive so from a fan point of view I think you want to do everything you can for your club to make sure your club can survive and if that means not coming to the matches uh, during the friendlies then then that's what you do but you're still going to get people turning up because as you say Chris they're, they're still going to want to um, to try and see a match if they can and we had a few yesterday who who as I say were quite aggressive about it and other people just kind of acknowledge the fact that that's the rules and we have to move on and, but it kind of is what it is right now. We just have to, it's that short-term pain for long-term gain. I think it's the, the phrase we use around the club quite a bit um, just now. And, and that's what's important, that we, we really need to do these things properly now. And then come kind of a few weeks or months down the line, we'll hopefully get back to, to what we want and, and normality. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. This has all been done to obviously protect the players and the, the people who are at the games. And obviously, you know, to hopefully get the fans back in the future, um, you know, if you can say a lot about you know the the contradictory COVID nineteen guidelines in terms of obviously being at a pub or a restaurant and then being at a football game and and stuff. But at the end of the day, we have to you know we've got no choice but to stick to the guidelines. Uh, certainly, the clubs do and, and football. So it's one of those things. And and as you mentioned, obviously, uh, you know you are, you are going to get fans. I think either way, if you post the game or no. I think, uh, in a sense, the hype will die down after this week anyway because we've had the, the first game. Everyone was buzzing, uh, certainly me. I mean, uh, it was a, you know, I'm usually at a football game on a Saturday when the season's on. Um, a wee bit guard, but, you know, I was happy watching the, the sort of Kelly live stream. I saw some of the, the Stranraer game against the reserves uh, south of Scotland. So, I mean, there's other things out there. Just try and be patient, I would suggest, and, and we'll, we'll take it from there. Um, as Cameron mentioned, obviously, like where you know that there's going to be different approaches to to the guidelines and how clubs are going to deal with it, but I'm sure I'm sure the clubs are quite open. If you if you were to ask them, like, oh, maybe what was the result or whatever uh, after the fact, then I'm sh- they'd probably tell you. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I think one thing I always like to to point out to people right now is is there seems to be a common kind of go to where you go, oh, but people are in pubs doing drinking and there's 200 people in there there's people in gyms the schools are open I think what we have to do as football and football fans is take football in isolation don't forget about what's happening in a pub forget what's happening in schools forget about gyms whatever um, and let's just do what, what's right by football if we want, if, if football's so important which it is to communities and to people and mental health and well-being and all that kind of stuff um, let's just focus on football and make sure we do right by football and we'll get football back the way we want it but if you continually point and finger it, uh, oh, I was in a boozer last night and there was a ton of people in there drinking and it was uh, it was noisy, there was no social distancing. That doesn't matter to football. Let's face yeah. it. That, that's, that's pubs. That's another problem. That's the government's problem to deal with. That's not football. Um, so we do right by football. We get football back. It's, it's that thing for the benefit of everyone. That's the, the important thing. So uh, in terms of clubs, yeah, I think you're right. I think most clubs will, will tell you and I think most clubs will post after the fact that they're, they're playing. Uh, I've played a match and doing kind of match reports and stuff like that. If you are able to film it, then you might get some highlights and all like from our club side of things. If we can make it work, we will be filming the games. There's no doubt about it, and fans can watch the matches um, after the fact. Absolutely no problem with that at all. But we're just going to try to make sure that you're doing 
doing right by the rule book um, just now. And I think I just read a tweet there from from someone about. I think people thought it was like the the, the leagues didn't want media people involved, and I don't think it was it was that. I think the whole point of the whole rules and the guidance was that, that there was strict guidance, and and media wasn't factored into that that guidance. So you have to do right by what's in front of you just now in terms of rules and guidance, and perhaps if we get some clarity, as I say, over the the next coming days, well, maybe by the next Saturday, we'll, most clubs will have live streams or, or highlights or match updates, who knows, but I think right now we just have to do what we're told and, and get on with it. Yeah, yeah, and you mentioned obviously the, the West of Scotland in terms of club struggling. Um, I do believe, you know, you shared an article uh, the other day with the, the chairperson of the West of Scotland and, you know, it, it's not... No, I didn't want to scare anyone, but it might be a possibility that the season does start without fans, uh, sadly. Yeah, I think it was actually one of our local journalists um, who did the, the article with Dave uh, McKenna uh, last week, and he's suggesting that the season will start, and, and the likelihood is that it will be closed doors. I think, um, I guess if you look at the Scottish Government guidance, it's one of those where um, the, the Phase 3 to Phase 4 movement was probably where we wanted things to happen and I mean we could get the fans back but they've obviously delayed that slightly so the the guidance will be reviewed again on the 5th of October I think it is um, we're looking at a season start of what the 10th of October so it doesn't give a lot of time if, if we do say we can get the fans back in on, on the 5th so I don't know I think maybe hopefully maybe see something maybe from the the, um, the Scottish Government at some point um, to see whether or not we can maybe have some sort of exemption or um, acknowledge we can do but I think the thing will be is that what happens in these friendlies in the next three weeks will, will probably dictate whether or not we can get the fans back in um, because I think that I think is that it's not just the fact that you, maybe you're standing at a match um, in, in the tennis and in your space that, that's great but they're still you've got to think about kind of how you move around the stadium and things like that so um, maybe not all clubs have that facility in the space to really do that properly who knows but um, I don't know if you might come down to a fact though that I think that that some clubs will get to have fans and some clubs some clubs won't um, at some point. That might be a that might be a possibility. I think if if a certain club can prove that they've got the um, the protocols in place around the around the ground uh, and get something signed off, that might be the way to, to go forward. And uh, that may then give the other clubs incentive to actually make sure they're doing the, the, the protocols the way they are they're supposed to be. So yeah, I think it's a bit worrying um, personally about the whole um, season start and. Um, in October behind closed doors I, I don't think that works personally um, for clubs I think yeah. if you take some clubs wage bills and things like that and um, some clubs obviously that will be playing at um, kind of rented or leased facilities and things like that they maybe have quite a high cost to, to actually get a game on uh, even if you were to move down to something like expenses then I don't think expenses for players would work so some guys obviously getting paid who might not want to play and then you start losing players and you have to bring in um, youth guys, it might kind of might reduce the quality of the product in the park, and then that that's not great for fans either. So I think um, getting the fans back is is absolutely important. I think a message to fans is we want you back. I don't think it's anything about that, that we don't want you there. We we absolutely hundred percent want to be there on that Saturday playing in front of 200, 300, whatever it is, and everyone enjoying their football like they used to. But right now we just have to make sure that we're, we're doing the right thing and. Um, so we'll hopefully get to a point where we know kind of by the end of September, maybe beginning of October, that, that what it looks like in front of us. And I think the leagues will have to make a decision probably pretty soon whether the, the league will, will go ahead um, in October because I don't think that's that's a firm kind of confirmed date or anything like that yet. But um, I think we're hopeful that we can get the season started. But what at what expense, who knows, we'll, we'll find out probably in February, March when teams start to struggle to, to pay players. or. Um, pay for their ground or things like that so yeah it's interesting times isn't it yeah yeah and in terms of obviously what you were saying about some grounds I mean we could see a realistic possibility and this and this is not even just at non-league level certainly league level uh, you're talking about league one league two um, if stadiums aren't adequate in terms of I think it's the world's COVID ready uh, then you yeah. might you might see teams obviously playing playing their home games at another stadium and um, obviously it's all it's still all up in the air. Um, there's still things to be worked out. Um, I do believe, you know, the, the, the league season will go ahead to begin with without fans. Uh, that's just my general belief. But um, 
you know, it's changing. The, the problem we have, I think, when we're discussing these things is the rules are changing by the day. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, it could it could be. It could be like this one week, and then it could be totally great the next week, and then it could go back. I mean, it's it's ever changing, and I think that's that's the thing that people need to realise. And and the fans, you, you know, you, I think you, you were spot on there. Uh, what you said, Ben, about the fans, we just have to be sensible. Don't turn up to the games. The the pressure. At, the reason I think clubs are dealing with things differently is because at the end of the day, I can speak all I want about this is my opinion, blah blah blah. But it's the clubs that have to deal with it. It's the clubs like you know, like yourself, Ben. You were saying, you know that fans are turning up and giving you grief or whatever like that. I don't have to deal with that. You and the committee and, and other clubs have to deal with that sort of thing. So that's why they are taking different approaches uh, by not advertising games, by, you know, some are just live streaming or, or posting highlights and stuff like that. So there's definitely different approaches uh, within the guidelines. Um, but yeah, uh, just be sensible. Don't be be rude or whatever. Um, again, I'm 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 similar. I'm I'm quite frustrated not being able to game uh, to get to games and and whatnot. But you know, I'm excited. Hopefully, that we. I mean, how great it will be when we when we are actually back at the football, mate. That's that's what I'm looking forward to. You know. Yeah, I think so. I think it'll be a, a better game day, and um, certainly from just touching on the on the media side of things. I mean, I love doing my job at, um, at Cohen and being involved in the club and, and doing all the media aspects. And, and media is one of my passions in the, in the first place. I think uh, say we do this podcast because we enjoy being involved in media and I do other podcasts as well that, that I really enjoy. So I think for me, I think that's the, the thing is we want to do the things for the, for the fans to make sure the fans know what's going on. But um, from my perspective, I, I won't be doing anything that I think can kind of conflicts the rules uh, or the guidance. I think if you look at the guidance, it says about the, the amber zone. If if it doesn't say a media person can be in the amber zone, then I won't be there. Um, and if I can't cover the match because I have to, to steward the ground because that's what we need right now is because we need stewards and people in high-vis jackets to, to wander around the, the ground to make sure that people are um, are not watching the match and gathering in groups and things like that then then so be it I'll do that job because ultimately I want to see fans back on the ground as soon as possible and if we can't do that um, because of the rules then then I won't be happy because I haven't done my job right so I, I've got to, to just do what's right by the, the guidance and the rules right now and if we can get the fans back or if you have to go behind closed doors we will look at doing things in terms of um, live streaming or uh, match highlights or updates etc so yeah, I think it's just one of those things, I know I've said it already today, but it's the, the short-term pain for, for long-term gains important right now, and we just have to do what we're told. And hopefully, come kind of October time, we'll be back and we'll be, uh, everyone will be there. Cause, I mean, it will be brilliant when we have everyone back on the ground and um, watching the match and being able to enjoy your Saturday with your mates in the ground and maybe going for a pint after it. Because I think that's probably one of the things is people will miss the... the the social aspect of football is face it how many people actually go to football these days to watch the football matches on the park and it's all about going to, to meet your mates and um have a few drinks and catch up and, and being away maybe from your family and just you being out with the boys having a, a good day or the girls whoever's actually coming to the match but i think it's important that we just we do right now and hopefully we'll get that all back and we'll all be having a great day on the potentially the the 10th of October when season starts and everyone will be there but who knows we're just hopeful um, I think we're living in hope right now but um, I think as well clubs have to think about this and, and plan um, for that I think I've seen a post the other day on um, Black and Bovo where somebody was saying how oh, we've we've planned for 38 matches this season uh, and then they, they cut the the, tw- the matches down to 28 um, this season which um, seems a bit silly to plan for a, a season that you didn't actually know what was going to look like yet but um, I think yeah if you plan ahead and make sure you do things like clubs can survive but we have that risk right now that clubs might struggle to survive and that's that's a massive concern yeah definitely and and hopefully we're working on something uh, you know to to raise awareness of that because it is a, a, a possibility one thing I would say though um, I think you're spot on with everything you say mate obviously we're hoping to get maybe a wee bit more clarity on this this issue but I mean it is what it is at the moment. Um, as we mentioned, clubs are interpreting things differently, which is their right if it's within the guidelines. So, yeah, uh, I think it was a short one today, Ben. Obviously, we're you know we'll hopefully be back 
to normal uh, in a few weeks. Obviously, when the season starts, quite excited. Uh, we'll probably separate with your lowland, west of Scotland, uh, possibly east of Scotland and stuff like that. But obviously, everyone that listens in, this is why we do it. Uh, to give you a bit of an update, our thoughts, um, updates on the clubs and whatnot. Really, really great. Uh, thanks, obviously, to our sponsors, the, uh, the Soccer Shop Direct, you know, the leagues and the, the players that all listen in. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll be back next week. We'll obviously see how things develop. Uh, we do have a few chats lined up for this week with, with different people. So, yeah, we'll keep you updated and uh, we'll be back soon. Mm-hmm.